Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Judith Patterson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Texas, and today I'm going to show you a card from the catalog. But before I do that, I wanted to apologize pretty quick um, for taking so long to get this video out. I usually try to do two videos a week, and it's been over a week since I have posted anything. Um, but that's because our kids, our two daughters, have... Um, both just well, let's see the youngest one just started a gap year program so she has um, moved to that facility for now and our oldest just transferred to a four-year college so she has just moved into a dorm for the first time um, all within four days so it's been quite an adjustment a lot of getting ready and packing and making sure we had everything and then getting them all settled in and then coming back to an empty house, which was really weird. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of bittersweet, exciting, um, a little scary and kind of sad moments. But I couldn't be more proud of both of my girls. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on. And hopefully from this point out, I'll be a bit more consistent with my Tuesday and Friday videos. I know this one is popping up on a Wednesday, um, but that's because I just needed yesterday to adjust. <laughs> so, um, I am going to be doing something a little different this time. I usually, if I'm going to change colors up, I do it ahead of time so that I make sure I like everything. But this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it here in the video, and hopefully it turns out the way it is in my mind. Hopefully it turns out that good. Okay, so I'm going to the annual catalog for this one, and it can be found on page 20. So I'm using the Nothing's Better Than stamp set this week. I really like this set. See if that makes it better or worse. I think that helped a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be making this card right here. This one uses a couple of techniques, all really fun, um, and it makes a beautiful card. So while I love all the colors in these, and I'll just tell you what those are real quick. Um, you have Garden Green, I mean not Garden Green, Granny Apple Green as the card base, um, and then Rich Razzleberry, Tahitian Tide, um, Daffodil Delight is the yellow, what have I missed, and Starry Sky is this darker blue in the little coffee cup and right here in between. So um, you'll need your blending brushes if you're going to make this along with me, layering circles dies, painted labels dies, and um, love you more than does and um, and a little bit of embossing powder this one they used white I'll be using silver because instead of using the butterfly designer series paper that is used here I'm going to be using the silver and gold paper from celebration because I just enjoy that paper I think it's pretty and I um, like I said I'm hoping that what I'm planning on doing will work for this card. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and get out a little piece of um, grid paper for my Stamparatus because I want to be able to move it out of the way while I'm die cutting. Every All the die cutting in for this card can be done with the mini stamp cut and emboss machine so that's always fun. And I'm going to start by getting hmm, my little scrap basket is almost empty. That hardly ever happens. Okay, so I'm going to just grab a bigger piece of basic white cardstock. And I'm going to get a pencil. And then from the Love You More dies, I'm going to grab the one that says Love You More Than. And I'm going to make a little cheat thing here. So from here to here, well right about there and then right across here and then this is the very tippy top so there's the bottom section the middle section and then the top section but I'm not going exactly by that it's just to give me an idea 
of what's what here. So I'm gonna leave that there so I can remember. Okay, so now I'm starting with my darkest blue. So in this case, let's see. Okay, so in this case, I'm using Orchid Oasis. So instead of the colors I named earlier, I'm gonna be using Orchid Oasis, Pool Party, Old Olive, Mango Melody, and Polished Pink, and we'll see how this turns out. All right, so I'm gonna grab a blending brush and just clean some of this darker ink off real quick. And then the very top, just kidding. What I actually wanna start with is the polished pink. That's good to go. Okay, so the very top is gonna to be polished pink. So I want to start off on the edge and dip down a little bit, and I wanna get this pretty saturated. Okay, so now I'm using Orchid Oasis, and I'm gonna go across the bottom of that polished pink. And clean that off a little bit, because now I'm gonna go even lighter, and I'm gonna pick up some Pool Party. close these up before I put my fingers in them. Then I'm going to pull out the Mango Melody and add that on the very bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to take my paper trimmer since my stock is a little bigger than I needed it to be. Just cut that off and I'm going to go ahead and grab my mini stamp cut and emboss machine and cut this out. You can line it up however you like. I want a little bit of that pink at the top but I want to make sure I've got some of the daffodil delight at the bottom as well. So I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool. I'm just going to poke these pieces out real quick and set them aside. I love the way these turned out. The subtle ombre effect and all the different colors. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp my cocktail, my coffee cup, and my chocolates. And I do have some small scraps that I can use for that. I don't know if I need this many or not. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to grab my Memento ink, my Tuxedo Black. You can also use Stays On. Um, it's totally up to you as to which one you want to use. I like using Memento ink. Um, most of the time, unless I'm dealing with something where I need the stays on. So if I was using um, like watercolors, for instance, I would use stays on ink instead of the memento. So now I'm going to stamp the insides of these. Um, so for the coffee cup, I'm going to grab the Orchid Oasis. I'm going to ink up the inside and I'm going to stamp.
stamp off once. Line it up and give it a good stamp on the inside. And then for the um, for the inside of the cocktail, I'm going to take my Mango Melody and my Pool Party. I think my Pool Party is actually a little lighter than the Mango Melody. So I'm going to start with it. And I'm going to ink up just part of it with that one. And then I'm going to turn it over. Love that you can see through this. So I'm inking up the bottom. I'm going to very lightly stamp off once. And then I'm going to stamp inside the cocktail cup. Okay, I like the way that turned out. And then I'm going to be using the old olive for the lime and the mango melody again for the umbrella. And I think I'm not going to stamp these off. Oh, yes, I am. Just a smidge. That looks good. almost forgot this one. So for this one, I'm going to use the pink again. And this one is not stamped off. There we go. I think I need to re-ink my polished pink. Okay, so let's get the um, die cut machine out again and go ahead and finish die cutting. Well, we're not going to finish die cutting. We're going to finish using the Love You More Than. Okay, so for this first one, match it with a little teacup and then the chocolates underneath. And then for the next one, do the cocktail. Okay. So, for this next part, I'm going to grab those little um, pieces of silver and gold specialty paper from Celebration and what I'm going to do is add just a little bit of old olive to this strapped piece. This is a 3 by 4 inch um, piece of paper and I'm going to add just a little bit of green. I think that's good. So now I'm going to take the other piece of silver. This is the spots. And I'm going to use polished pink on this one. And I'm just going to, again, lightly go over that. Very lightly. I went a little heavy handed with the green. Probably should have cleaned my brush out just a little bit before I got started with the green one. Live and learn and hopefully remember for next time. It just makes each card a little bit special and unique. Okay, so now I'm going to use my 
Um, oh, I think I've covered them up. So I'm using the painted labels die to cut out this one. And then I'm going to use a layering circles die to cut out vellum to go on top of it. The second largest layering circles die. I'm keeping all my pieces there on my grid paper. So I grabbed a three by four piece of vellum cardstock. But you really only need a 3x3 three three piece, that'll be fine. Okay, so I'm still keeping all those together, but I'm getting them off my piece of paper because I need to grab my old olive card base. I've already pre-cut and scored it. So it's eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. And then I scored it at four and a quarter inches. Just using my bone folder to give it a nice crease. And then this part's a little tedious, um, but I'm gonna use my old olive ink on the old olive cardstock. And I'm just gonna put down a lot of these little, what are they, little asterisks, little starburst. I'm just stamping randomly. You don't have to stamp the um, entire card, so you can leave the center blank. And you can get them as close or as far apart as you want. Um, and I'm going to stop talking now so I can speed this up. You don't have to watch the whole time. Okay, so that took about four or five minutes. Um, I sped it up, so hopefully it didn't take anywhere near that long for you to watch. Um, but I wanted to tell you, I was at a weird angle, so I did. I mean, this is really random, and some of them are overlapped, while some of them are um, spread further apart. But if you're, um, if you're at a better angle than I was, I was trying to stay out of the way of the camera. Um, it should be a little easier to get them um, maybe not quite so crazy but I still like the way it turned out and I'm happy with it so I'm gonna move on um, and I'm gonna grab a piece of polished pink cardstock I'm hoping I have a scrap around here somewhere And look at that, I do. It's a pretty big scrap, I don't need that much. So I'm gonna cut it. I want one and a half inch wide strips. And I think what I'm gonna do, so this is almost five and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut it at two and three eight. No, I'm not. I'm gonna cut it at two and I'm just gonna cut it at two and three quarters. We're just gonna go with that. Okay. Because all I really need are the tips sticking out. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and cut both of these again because I really don't need a lot. So one and a half inches by one and a half inches is plenty. In fact, one of these is even shorter than that, and I still think it's going to be fine. So I'm going to use that pencil again, and I'm going to mark, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So right here is halfway, and then I want to mark a quarter inch in. So up three, one, two, three, and then in one. I'm just making a tiny little dot, one, two, three, and in one. 
on each of these and then I'm going to use my paper snips um, to cut at an angle towards this dot to make a banner end. So each one of these I'll start at the corner Okay, and then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to bend the tips of these back and forth a little bit. Just kind of give it a worn look. Okay, so let's start layering. There are two more pieces that I need to do, um, but before I get to those, let's go ahead and get some of this on here. So I'm going to start with my liquid glue. I'm just going to glue these straight onto the card. And I'm going to put this on here just for a, a guide. To get me started. So I'm going to just kind of travel this up so that it's in a believable angle from that other one to pretend like it's just one long piece of cardstock. And I'm going to do the same to this one. So I'm just kind of do, 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 do. There we go. And I realize I moved both of those, so it's not a perfect line. Okay, so then this piece is going to go next. But before I put it on... I want to go ahead and glue this piece on. Make sure all your little bits are poked out. I'm going to add just a little dollop of glue up around these edges a little bit. So there is that one. And then the cocktail can go on the left. Then we'll put the chocolates down here on the bottom right. And then the coffee cup. Okay, so now that that's all done, I'll use my dimensionals to put this piece on the card. So I'm leaving the middles of the sides um, without dimensionals because I don't want it to have a weird warp to it um, because that's going to be a little bit thicker having that extra cardstock there. Okay, there we go. And then now I'm going to take my dimensionals. You can cut up full size dimensionals, the trim around like this, um, whatever you need to do, whatever you have handy. So when I made my practice card with the original colors, I used many Stampin' Dimensionals cut up, but since I'm down to the edges of this one, I thought that would be perfect. And if it sticks over, that's fine. Just give it a little trim.
Okay, so I realized I messed up um, dealing with those teeny tiny pieces of dimensionals is kind of frustrating. So let me give you a better way. Um, if you'll turn to page 127 in your annual catalog, um, this is the 2022 to 2023 annual catalog, you'll see all of our different adhesives. Um, so you can look at number five here, and these are foam adhesive sheets. They measure four and a half inches by four and five sixteenths of an inch. Not five. Yes, five. Five sixteenths of an inch. Um, and you get six sheets in this package. And what you can do is stick your cardstock to one of these sheets, cut it to match the size of your cardstock that you're cutting out, and then run the whole thing through your die cut machine when you're die cutting your words um, and then the whole the back of your words is just one um, big adhesive sheet and you can pull off the adhesive and you're good to go why I always forget that I do not know I think what I need to do is make myself a little post-it note and stick it in my pocket with my dies so that I remember whenever I'm wanting to pop them up with the dimensionals to use those foam adhesive sheets when cutting out my dies. So that's a, two tips. <laughs> the one tip is to use the foam adhesive sheet. The second tip is to um, give your, put yourself a note with your dies so that you remember to do that. Okay, so I went ahead and embossed you make everything better with silver embossing powder and then I uh, cut out the everything so this parts not so bad so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut two more narrow pieces and put them on the back of everything I am making quite the mess today I have ink all over not just my fingers but my hands it's everywhere Okay, so I'm going to put that on here, and then now I can use um, all of these places to hide my glue dots to put down my vellum. And you don't have to use glue dots for this. You could use liquid glue or tear and tape or um, whatever it is that you like to use, but I like the glue dots because it'll help it to pop up just a little bit because I'm going to be putting it over these pieces too. It's just not quite as flat as some of our other adhesives, but it's not pop up like like dimensionals would be. Oops. All done love you more than everything so let me clear this off so you can see these cards side by side so this is the one that we just made um, and I'll put the colors up above it so it's orchid oasis pool party old olive polished pink and mango melody and then the original card is this one here and these colors were Starry Sky, Tahitian Tide, Granny Apple Green, Rich Raspberry, and Daffodil Delight. So, um, 
there you have it. I hope you like this card. I know this one took a little bit longer than I usually do, um, but I think it's worth it for this one. This one is just fun. It uses a lot of colors, several techniques that are um, a little bit different and fun to do. And so I think it's I think it's cool every once in a while to do some cards that just take a little bit longer and have a little bit more effort put into them. Um, I wouldn't want to make 20 of these though. That would take way too long. All right, thank you so much for watching. Um, remember that celebration is still happening. So there's the original um, celebration items. Are, some of those are still available, and then there was another flyer put out that is actually items from the catalog that you can get for free with your $50 or $100 purchase during Celebration. Um, and if you decide to join Stampin' Up! during Celebration, I would love to have you on my team. That's really all I've got for you today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. That always makes my day. And if you haven't already, um, but you would like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below too. Thanks again for watching. You'll have a great week. Happy stamping.